In today's video, I will test out my hydrogen generator and discuss the many problems that I had with this. Because if you think I put it together and nothing went wrong, you're wrong. Well, I suppose it's not really your fault because I made it look like nothing went wrong. In my last video, I said that I managed to fix almost all of the leaks. That did not mean all. The biggest problem I had is that these airtight containers here, which are labelled as airtight, are absolutely not airtight. Despite me putting four metres of Teflon plumbing tape around here each con for each container, the damn thing still leaked. So then I realised that the travel bottles there were actually airtight. So I decided to use those instead to fill it up. And to seal it, what I did was I got this silicon sealant and I put a bead on the inside, sealed it shut, and for good measure, I got this epoxy resin stuff. Now, as I said, number five plastic or polypropylene plastic is almost impossible to glue. In fact, this stuff says specifically that it's not designed for polypropylene plastic or polyethylene plastic. Polypropylene and polyethylene plastics are food safe plastics and that makes it the most common type of plastic there is in the house. And this stupid glue won't even glue the most common type of plastic in the house. Anyways, I epoxied everything with this resin. Um, this resin does not stick to this plastic but I just need something to get in the gaps and stop these lids leaking as much as possible. Although the epoxy did cure on the plastic, it was not bonded to the plastic. I could easily peel it off. However, I found that this was enough to stop the leaks. So what I then did was I filled the generator with distilled water. And then what I did was I added the sodium hydroxide to it. I've got my gloves on. And first of all, I need to fill it up with DI deionized water, not chlorinated water because we do not want chlorine to be produced. And also got safety goggles on. So deionized water is basically just pure water. Oh, I do actually have a funnel. And now, here's the dangerous part, caustic soda. Now caustic soda is sodium hydroxide and it is caustic so that's why we're wearing gloves because this will damage the skin if it's in a high enough concentration when mixed with water. And sodium hydroxide dissolves fat, turning it into soap. And remember, always add caustic soda to water, never the other way around. If you add it the other way around, if you add water to caustic soda, the reaction can overheat and just cause general problems. Now the problem with my generator is that it has a design flaw. Because they're connected by thin vinyl pipe, it's difficult to get to two sides at the same concentration. And when I measured the resistance across it, I found that it was actually producing its own voltage. Now I suspect that this is because the graphite rods were in different ends of a concentration gradient. I tried to power it from a 6 volt lantern battery and nothing happened when I connected it. So I kept on adding more sodium hydroxide, but nothing happened. So I kept on adding more sodium hydroxide, still nothing happened. So I added more sodium hydroxide, and nothing happened. So what I decided to do was I decided to test the concentration by putting aluminum foil in it. Aluminum. Aluminium foil into it and I saw that it did not react, so I added more sodium hydroxide. Still, nothing happened. 
So I figured that the obvious thing was that these lantern batteries cannot provide enough power. I got my 20 volt laptop battery charger and also my Sony PlayStation 8.5 wall adapter in series to power it. And yes, something happened. It was bubbling. Well, I managed to power this using um, an, the 6 volt battery, my 20 volt laptop charger and my 8 volt um, PlayStation adapter and it is bubbling don't know if you can see but not very much a couple of things suck about my design um, I can't get a consistent concentration of sodium hydroxide throughout the whole thing and also this thin vinyl pipe connecting both sides and also the distance between the rods greatly increase the resistance meaning that the amount of power this draws is minimal. So if I was to redesign this, I, I would make this shorter or best still put both rods in the same container. But hey, it's working. Okay, so what I've done is I've added more sodium hydroxide and I don't know if you can see, but it's actually going a bit faster now. And I put both tubes into here and you can see it's producing bowls of hydrogen and oxygen. Now this produces twice as much hydrogen as it does oxygen. Hence the formula for water as H2O, two hydrogens, one oxygen. As I said, a couple of things suck about this. Yeah, it, it's just generally a poor, poorly thought design. But this is my first generator that gives me a good yield of oxygen gas. The rest of them, what happened was that the oxygen would react with the electroplates. But this one, doesn't, that doesn't happen because I'm using graphite rods. Now this also means that I can use this to produce chlorine gas if I use sodium chloride instead of sodium hydroxide. Since chlorine gas is very toxic, you do not want to use sodium chloride in this. Although that is potentially a good idea, or not good, but an idea for another video. I was able to get a few bubbles through a cup of water of hydrogen and oxygen gas. However, I did not get enough time in the day to collect those gases. So I decided to put it away in the garage. And I had supper. But then I came back to it and I found it was still warm. And I was like, why is it doing that? So then I left it overnight. I came back to it. It had, it had cooled down. During the day, I went away, but I did some research. Now, the travel bottles are made from a plastic called polyethylene tetraphthalate. And polyethylene tetraphthalate is attacked by sodium hydroxide. So when I came back to it, I found that the travel bottle funnels, they started to disintegrate. And it was late at night, it was about 10 o'clock at night. I really did not know if I was going to be able to leave overnight without it leaking everywhere. So then I had to empty it in the middle of the night, wearing rubber gloves, my lab coat and goggles. And I don't have a clue what the neighbours thought of me if they saw me. A 14 year old with a lab coat wearing gloves and goggles pouring something down the drain. John George. I'm trying to open this up so you can see the disintegrated parts of it. So here you can see what I was talking about. Same with Jocks, I just completely attacked and started to break these plastic travel bottles and yeah another lost project well these connect um, lids here I can still use for another generator and I was able to salvage the graphite rods and the cable connectors so this was pretty much the end of my hydrogen generator it was dissolving itself it had a very crappy conductivity and it just generally 
sucked. I spent about a week and a half of my life on this. And yeah. Oh well. Now, if I was to do this again, I would use these bottles instead. And I would, these bottles are made from high density polyethylene or number two plastic. And that is able to resist sodium hydroxide. So what I would do, I would use these nail polish remover bottles instead, because these would act as their own container and their own funnel. And also, I will put a smaller vinyl pipe so it's even less resistance for the charged ions to go across. And helpfully, these threads here, these also fit the travel of bottles, meaning that I can still use the same fittings for my vinyl pipes. I've kind of had enough of chemistry at this point and I want to see if I can have a look around in the world of high voltage. Now my Van de Graaff generator produced around 15,000 volts although it did say it was capable of 40,000 volts and now the problem is is that this Leyden jar here I forgot I connected a ground wire to it Anyways, my Leyden jar, what I think is happening is, is that the charges are running away from it because it's not perfect at all. Now, I cannot promise anything. I might not look into high voltage. I might look into another realm of chemistry. But I'm currently a bit interested in high voltage. So the next videos you see might be on that. I really don't know what I will upload. So remember to subscribe, share and like.